Okay, folks, uh, welcome to the Hadley Board of Health public hearing to receive some input on proposed regulations, which we're calling restricting the sale of tobacco products and a regulation prohibiting smoking in workplaces and public places. We appreciate you taking the time to be here. A copy of the proposed regulations is available on the table over here just inside the door near the file cabinets. I'd like to introduce my fellow board members. This is Richard Tessier, Jen Gould, and I'm Greg Misch. Um, we won't be voting on the proposals or the regulations tonight. We're just here to listen to you folks um, who have come out. We welcome your input and perspectives and we'll try to incorporate those concerns in our final decision. Uh, please address all your comments to the Board of Health. Uh, when addressing the Board, please identify yourself by name, address, and any professional affiliation that you may have. Try to limit your comments to a couple of minutes so that other members of the audience have a chance to speak. Please be considerate of those persons speaking, whether you agree or disagree with them, and refrain from commenting out of turn. And please again address all your comments to the Board. So once again, thank you for coming out. And if anyone wants to speak, please raise your hand and the Board will recognize you. Please identify yourself. And um, hi, my name is Nicole Zappo. I am the Director of Public Health for the City of Greenfield. Um, I am here to support the passing of these regulations. Um, Greenfield is a member of the uh, Franklin Hampshire Tobacco Coalition, which Hallie is a part of as well. So um, any member town that we can get to um, join us in passing the regulations is uh, something that I um, certainly, you know, approve and would like to see happen. Greenfield passed um, the same regulations um, back in m March of this year. Um, we did give a, a few month uh, waiting period from when the regulations were passed to when they became effective. They became effective this past July 1st. Um, we, uh, it, it definitely, you know, had, had a few bumps in the road. Um, we, for the first few months after the regulations passed, really worked with our store uh, vendors quite a bit, um, especially around the flavor piece as well. There's a, a lot of, you know, is this product acceptable? Is this product not? Um, and so we didn't come out sort of full force with enforcement, and we still haven't yet. We were going to give it a good six months before we really um, went out and did uh, compliance checks on the products themselves. And um, our store uh, vendors really appreciated that. Um, you know, I think um, we had a, quite a bit of voiced opposition at our public hearing in Greenfield. Um, and even with that, the board decided to move forward with the regulations. Um, you know, big believers that. Uh, it's all about youth access and deterring youth from getting started smoking. And these regulations uh, have uh, been proven to do that in other cities and towns across the straight state, mainly Eastern Mass, Needham, who's had them the longest. So um, as a member of the coalition, as a director of public health in Greenfield, I uh, hope to see you pass these regulations. Thank you. And um, good evening, thank you very much for holding this hearing. My name is Cheryl Sabara. I am the senior staff attorney for the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards, and I rise in strong support of these regulations. And I want to just point out a couple of things. Um, one of the measures in these regulations would increase the minimum legal sales age of tobacco to 21. And we know through research that 90% of the adults that purchase tobacco from minors are between the ages of 18 and 21. So this goes a long way toward removing at least that legal channel of tobacco um, to um, high school aged children. We also know that um, if, if you can get tobacco out of environments that kids frequent and out of groups that kids are peers with, for instance, high school students, um, there is a very good, that's another very good avenue of reducing legal channels to 
individuals who don't, whose brains are not fully developed, a, a fully developed brain, um, according to people much smarter than me, is at about the age of 25. So when folks say an 18 year old should be able to choose to use tobacco, uh, I just question, and I think a lot of us question whether they're really making an educated choice when they're when, when their brains are not fully developed. And I would also, with the flavoring restriction that this reg proposes, we know that the FDA banned, the, banned all flavored tobacco products, I'm sorry, all flavored cigarettes with the exemption of menthol back in 2009. And the rationale that they used for that is that they were clear, there's clear evidence of marketing toward toward those that are under the age of 18 um, or 21, whatever the regulation is that you ultimately consider. And it's the exact same rationale to restrict flavored other tobacco products that aren't cigarettes. So with that having been said, I strongly support these and I thank you for considering them. Sean Barry, 6 Kennedy Drive, also the owner of Four Seasons Wine and Liquor and uh, past president of the Massachusetts Packed Store Association. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, I like the approach in Greenfield, whereas it's not just, you know, the wall comes down, you're willing to work with the retailers because it is a learning curve. It's a big learning curve. Uh, we yep. saw that back when uh, the ban on cigarette making machines was put into effect. Three inspectors came into my store, and it, one said, no, it's just the giant ones that make the cartons. The next one came in and said, no, it's the pocket ones, too. So there is a big learning curve on both sides, so I respect that. Uh, as far as the flavoring stuff is concerned, why isn't this being extended to the e-cigarettes and the, the vapor products? It is. Okay, because I didn't see anything regulated. Those regulations are there on the table. So okay, they're, maybe they're I just missed it tobacco. because it's yeah. 18 so pages and yeah. Under the definition of tobacco, tobacco products, they're in there. Yeah. Okay, what about the ones that don't contain nicotine? They're in there too. They're in there too. Okay, because yeah, as a non-smoker and a parent, I applaud these restrictions. Um, as a libertarian, I just question. Uh, the level of uh, checks and balances that our democracy is used to. We have a three-member three board who are making these decisions for everyone. Um, small part of my business. I'm not going to you know, sit here and fight saying I need it to stay in business because I don't. But uh, I do have customers who use it. Uh, we have the possibility of recreational marijuana coming up, which I saw in here stats, you know, the flavored stuff, yes, that market has increased over the past few years, partly due to the relaxed attitude towards cannabis and how it is delivered. And face it, we're a society that has grown up with a sweet tooth. So, you know, what you eat all day is uh, sweet, fruity flavored things. It's going to go on into your other bad habits. So I, I don't think it's the root of the issue, but uh, it definitely is a favored delivery system for uh, tobacco and other substances for the younger generation. So it is an appropriate measure to try and keep it out of the hands of uh, the youth. So I'm torn on these regulations. I've seen the other towns do it, and I knew it was only a matter of time, either A, before Hadley just got on board with the surrounding communities, because face it, we're all in it together, and if one community does it and the other one doesn't, it's not going to be effective. Uh, either that or the whole state is going to come down and uh, make it a statewide issue, which I think it should be done. But, uh, you know, members of the State House seem to be a little less uh, backbone to uh, make a bold statement as to do that. So I'm just pretty much here to uh, express my concerns about uh, 
restricting people who pretty much have the right to choose. Uh, I have no problem with the 21 uh, year old restriction on it. Might as well make it aligned with alcohol. Uh, and like I said, as far as business wise, it's not going to affect me. It's a small portion, and I could probably just use the display space for wine and bourbons and be happier about <laughs> it. Uh, so I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess uh, it just, you know, raising the price and an argument was made to me, it says, well, you just get to pocket that extra money, so you should be happy with that. But I'm never happy with overcharging my customers. I've always, you know, prided myself on doing fair pricing, and I guess I would just choose not to carry the product as opposed to charge them, charging $5 for a product that should be less than $2. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I, I well. Yes, sir. I'm Ken Farbstein with Tobacco Free Mass in Needham. Um, we, we were the first town in the country to raise the age to 21 back in 2005, 6, 7. And uh, it's, a, it's a, which I'm very grateful for. I didn't have a role in that. But as the father of a 19 year old daughter who's into experimenting with all kinds of different things, I'm really grateful that, that tobacco was not one of the things that she uh, experimented with. Um, this is some of the products that we talked about, the flavored uh, products. So these are technically cigars. Um, they, they meet the definition of cigars, not of cigarettes. And that whole pack is $2. So these are some of the products that we, you know, we want to really want to restrict. I, I said that, um, that I was glad that we're in need of them. Um, it seems to protect my daughter um, until she went to Florida for college and um, had a girlfriend who um, introduced her to vaping, and I, I found out about this when my daughter um, put on Facebook a picture of her blowing this, the vape out of her out of her uh, mouth, I guess, and um, so uh, which I was just utterly incensed about because I know that these are addictive devices. So her favorite flavor is uh, strawberry pervert. They come in 972 different products and flavors, as your as you have tabulated and listed. Um, hers is, is, you can smell it uh, in here. So my uh, Hanukkah present was that I, I insisted that she uh, stop for the month of December and that she give me the, the device. Um, and I told her I was going to show it tonight. So, but I, just the idea that, um, uh, that she would become addicted to this, become habituated to it, uh, is, is terrifying to me as a father because I know the statistics as you do. Um, that, you know, that half of people who are addicted to, to nicotine will ultimately die from it. So I, I really hope that you will adopt these regs in full. Um, uh, Cheryl, you mentioned the Institute of Medicine report, um, or the brain science, rather, about the adolescent brain. I just wanted to quote a sentence from the IOM report, um, uh, finding 3.6, it's in chapter 3. Uh, adolescent brains, because of their level of development, are uniquely vulnerable to the effects of nicotine and nicotine addiction. So, you know, the, the point that now we've been learning so much more about brain science, and so the uh, um, the wiring that's done, it, it, it's still uh, that the adolescent brain is flexible in that way, and uh, it can, can be rewired to that make it more likely that they'll get addicted not only to nicotine but to other substances, of the opioids as well. So there's a kind of nasty uh, double effect from that. So I, I could, could go on a lot. I, you did ask me to restrict the comments to two minutes. I'd be happy to send you more information if, if you're interested in the sure. academic pediatrics or anywhere else. Uh, we did provide, I think, um, Dr. Uh, Winnikoff of Mass General Hospital mm -hmm. yes. and Dr. Hartman provided her letter of support, um, as did the American Heart Association yeah. and uh, Tobacco Free Mass, the organization that I work for as well. Uh, and Dr. Ruth Poteen, who is a, a doctor in Greenfield. We got all those letters. You got those, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mary Kurslong, the coordinator for the Franklin Hampshire Tobacco Substance Prevention Partnership, of which you're a member in Greenfield and of 27 other boards of health in Hampshire and Franklin counties. And uh, you mentioned that lots of other towns 
have passed these regulations. And so I just uh, would like to say that um, including South Hadley, um, which has passed age 21 and is considering the flavor ban now, Granby, which, um, uh, say, uh, same thing. They passed the flavor and, and, and they didn't pass 21, but the rest, uh, Greenfield, Montague, uh, Sunderland, Shelburne, Buckland, Leverett, Waitley, and Gill in Franklin County have passed these, and in you know, the rest of Hampshire County, uh, Amherst and Southampton and Hatfield. So um, many of the towns in our coalition have passed similar regulations, and not just the youth access regulation, but also the environmental tobacco smoke regulation that's before you. Uh, so, uh, so far those are the towns that have passed the regulation. Northampton is considering it. East Hampton will be looking at them when they get a full, they're, they're missing a Board of Health member, so they're, they're going to be looking at them too, and also Deerfield. So in Franklin County, all the large town populations, all the t towns with, in, with populations have passed them. And in Hampshire County, it, I anticipate the same thing. And I, I would just add, I apologize for interrupting, but I would just add that at 5 o'clock tonight, the city of Boston passed these regulations restricting flavored tobacco products and increasing the minimum legal sales age to 21, unanimously. They also adopt the minimum pricing on single. They already had that. So they already had that. Anyone else? Okay, well, if that's what we've got, uh, thank you all for coming out. Um, the board won't make a decision tonight, but we will be considering these regulations at one of our regularly scheduled meetings. We do meet every Tuesday night. Our meetings are open to anyone that wants to come in, announced or unannounced. We welcome any public input. And somewhere down the road, we will be considering these regulations. So we'll keep you all informed and appraised of what's going on. And once again, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.